up, ladies and gentlemen? Marcus Sarah here. Today, we're going to talk about Top G. Everybody's been talking about it. This is the man who got banned from the internet. Guys, it's been more than him just getting banned. His entire existence was deleted from the interwebs. PBD, Patrick Bet David, recently did a five hour interview with Andrew Tate. And we're going to not go through the whole thing, but we're going to show you just the intro, just so you get a taste of what this interview is like. And then you can go ahead and click on the link in the description and go watch that five hour video. There is so much to unpack on this video that it would take me literally five hours to go through everything and dissect it. We may take clips here and there, but for this video, we're going to talk about censorship. But without further ado, let's go and check out the intro to the Patrick Bet David Andrew Tate interview. When you have the youth, the masculine youth of the world, thinking for themselves, that's pretty scary to a Corey. One of the biggest fatal mistakes any man or human being can make. To chop my head off and try and delete me is asinine in and of itself. Another thing, I'll give the game away. Here's your piece of paper. Do you want to get canceled again, Logan? You're saying a call like that was made? 100%, the dude's a bitch. Lady of yours that you introduced to us yesterday said, this is my wife. I don't even know if I'm convinced you want to have five lives. And that's a very astute observation, and you are correct. But I won't believe in it. I don't want to believe in things that make me weak. Suddenly the most famous man on the internet, and then all of a sudden gone from the internet. So today's sit-down is a sit-down many of you have been asking about for a while, and we finally pulled it off. Uh, there's been no conversations of what we can't talk about. He said nothing's off limits. We're talking everything and anything. However, he chooses to answer, obviously, it's going to be on him. Uh, today's guest is Andrew Tate. Um, many will call him possibly the most popular man on social media the last six months. Nearly 20 billion views on all social media. Uh, the most searched man on social. We were looking at the list. We put up Biden. We put up Trump. We put up Putin. We put up everybody. And he was up there. Some periods he was above everybody else. And... Uh, Recently, he got banned in late uh, August. I think the third or fourth week of August, he got banned last, uh, la uh, late August. And at that time, from June to July, his Instagram account was growing at 100,000 followers, new followers on a daily basis, on track to get to 10, 20, 40, 50 million followers on Instagram. Suddenly like this, he gets banned. Everybody's wondering what happened. Some had positive thoughts about it. Some didn't have positive thoughts about it. We'll get into that as well. But uh, Tate, appreciate you for making the time in. It's good to be spending these few hours with you. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here, guys. Thank you very much for having me. So guys, we're gonna leave that right there and we're gonna leave a little bit of mystery into what the rest of this interview is all about. I, it's literally took me days to go through this because you can't just sit in one whole sitting. Well, maybe some of you guys can, but I can't just sit for five hours and watch this. So I've been taking little clips, little bits at a time, half hour here, hour there, and I'm, you know, and it took me a while to get through the interview. Guys, honestly, it was one of the best interviews that I've ever seen. It's like, it was like listening to Joe Rogan on steroids because they talked about everyone from, you know, uh, Joe Rogan to Trump to different, you know, entertainers and, and athletes. And the things that Tate says will really put a fire under you. It'll get you pissed off. It'll get you angry. It'll have you smiling. It'll have you laughing, rolling on the floor. It'll have you crying. But all at the same time, you love the guy, you hate the guy, you don't know what to do with the guy. But I'll tell you one thing right now, you sure as hell can't get rid of the guy. He is the most, some say the most hated man on the internet. He says he's the most loved man on the internet. And he also says he's the most searched man on the internet. But guys, the problem here is, and let's talk about this for a second. Here's the elephant in the room. If the powers that be, if these big, huge conglomerates, these big social media enterprises social governments can take somebody of this stature, of this, this amount of influence over a generation and a population and delete him off of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all of the other social media platforms, then they can do that whenever they want to whomever they want. Now it goes even a step further because Andrew Tate goes and explains in this interview that when the email started coming, he also started to notice that his other accounts were beginning to get frozen as well. His payment processor got shut down. His Discord channel got shut down. He even went as far as to say that his Uber 
account got completely shut down. And he also said his Gmail account, all his email accounts got shut down as well. Now, he says that this was a coordinated effort. And I tend to believe that this could very well be a coordinated effort. Now, we don't know who's behind it. He's tried to request information from the different social media channels and nobody has gotten back to him. But like Patrick David said, he was growing at 100,000 followers per day on Instagram. He was going to be one of the biggest Instagram accounts, hands down, within just a few months. Now, why was he deleted? Why was his existence wiped off the internet? Some say because he was endangering the lives of others. Some say he was endangering the minds of impressionable youth. They said he was a misogynist, saying hurtful things to women and causing harm to others. Now, I've watched several interviews of Tate. I've heard some of the outrageous things that he said before, that he's even said about women. He said some stuff about males as well. But one thing coming from the horse's mouth, Tate himself, the top G himself, he says he's the very person that empowered women. He's the very person that was empowering these impressionable youth. He says through his message of being a realist, that he was shedding light on the truth, whether people liked it or not, that he's never ever done anything wrong or hurt anybody. He's never once had any type of woman come up against him and bring allegations that he's hurt them or he's done anything to disrespect them. Now, Andrew Tate had a large platform, an affiliate course where young men and women could go and learn how to be a better person, learn different types of skills to become entrepreneurs or to become business owners. He also had an affiliate program on his platform that a lot of people said were a scam. They said it was nothing but a Ponzi scheme, but he had over 100,000 people on this course. Now me, I personally think he's a marketing genius. One of the things he, he did very, very, very well is ensure that his image was out there so much that no matter what platform took him down, you would never be able to get rid of Andrew Tate. Now he says in the interview that he has something different than a lot of influencers out there. He has a fan base rather than just a follower base. A fan base is someone who is loyal. He talks about living in Romania and he talks about how people traveled to Romania to see him. He talks about going to other countries where nobody knew his plans and all of a sudden seeing tens of thousands of people out there shouting top G, top G, top G. Now he says that's a big, big difference than people like Logan Paul, who grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth, given everything. Their parents gave them anything that they wanted. They began their YouTube journey early on and through YouTube going viral. They've had a successful career as YouTube influencers and, and even in the athletic field. But he says the very big difference is they have followers and they need their social media to keep their reputation going. They need their social media to continue to make money. He says he doesn't need social media. He said he doesn't care if he ever goes back to social media ever again. He's still gonna have everything that he needs. He'll go live up in the mountains and be by himself and he said he'd be self-sufficient. Some people say he has a cult-like following where people, these young people, almost worship him in a way. And you have to admit, when somebody gets that big, you can look at many of the superstars, the super influencers out there, people get so uh, obsessed and infatuated with their identity that they're willing to do anything and everything to get their attention. The thing that really boggles my mind is I've experienced some of this censorship even on my small platforms. Recently, I've acquired about a million followers on Facebook. To some of these people like Top G, Patrick Bet David, that's just that's just a small fish in a large pond. But I was recently banned from Facebook for posting something that apparently Facebook didn't like. Now, they didn't ban me indefinitely. I was able to get my account back, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. I was also banned on TikTok before. I had an account of 250,000 followers, and this was during the in insurrection drama that took place during Trump's presidency. I started reporting some of the things that were going on. And next thing I knew that my account had been completely banned. That was a big one because I was actually generating a lot of income from that channel through meeting clients and by doing business promotions for other companies. I had to start at ground zero again. I had to start a whole new channel all over again. And if you've ever been somebody to grow a channel to a substantial amount of followers, it's not easy. It takes a lot of work. Now the internet, is the wild, wild west. I don't know if you remember when Joe Rogan almost got banned. He almost got censored because some old videos from years ago 
started resurfacing of some things that he probably shouldn't have said. Well, because of those videos, these conglomerates, these social governments started to threaten his identity. He hung on by the skin of his teeth. He was able to recover and he was able to continue his journey on social media. I don't know if you remember, during Trump's presidency again, he lost all of his accounts and he was forced to start his own social media channel called Truth Social. And there's countless number of other people who have lost their channel. Now, this is a big deal. Some say they're private entities, they're private companies, they can do whatever they want. Well, as much as we understand that they're private companies and they can do whatever they want, they still give a large platform to the public audience. And that's what's the most dangerous thing out there. That these so-called social media private platforms, these businesses, they can turn you off any time that they want without any reason why. As a social media influencer, you begin to get almost paranoid that you're gonna say the wrong thing or that maybe you'll have a guest on your show that will say the wrong thing and it will cause drama and potentially get you canceled. Now, whether you like Top G, Andrew Tate or not, the question still remains, is this okay? And are we gonna be okay with these platforms instantly being able to wipe you completely off of the face of the interwebs. Do social media platforms have too much control? Are the algorithms set up to feed you misinformation? We know for a fact that during elections, these algorithms are set up to sway elections. We saw it the past two elections, and I guarantee you we'll see it the next several elections. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you go and check out that five hour interview because I guarantee you, you'll be entertained and you may even get inspired. I appreciate you jumping on this channel and watching this video. And as always, if you appreciate the content on this channel, make sure you drop a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and share this video to your social media platform. Until the next video, my friend, make sure you live loud, laugh louder and learn to be a better you. We'll see you in the next video.